Hey folks, this is a quick video to help people with uh, managing their managers. And uh, I'm actually going to deviate from the machine learning stuff uh, real quick on this one and just move right into this project. Should be a fairly quick video. One of the things that I see a lot um, and that I've done a lot is I'll have a game, right? And I'll have a bunch of managers and I'll have like my game manager, right, holds all of my game logic, what is the current game state, maybe some rules for the particular game, player health, stuff like that. Um, and then I might also have an input manager that's taking input from the keyboard, mouse, gamepad, and then using that to control things in the game, menu systems, what have you. And also a network manager. And these are mostly independent systems, right? A network manager and a game manager might have to communicate sometimes, but not a lot. So you want to encapsulate them as their own manager. But at the same time, you want them to be able to reference each other. Um, and when they do reference each other, it you want to do it in a way that's seamless and easy to use. Um, so often, you know, I'll just put in a public, you know, if I'm in the network manager, I'm like, oh, I need the game manager to get the current game state, right? I'll put in a public variable and then I have to wire it up every time and it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, the other solution <clears throat> that I see a lot is uh, in the Unity code, you'll put in find routines um, in start or worse in update and you're constantly finding these things over and over again, which can lead to performance issues. Or, um, you know, uh, you can also use the singleton pattern. And with the singleton pattern, um, you usually end up with tight coupling uh, between the components. It's not easy to reassign them. It makes it harder to test, especially if you want to test your game. Uh, maybe you want to have a, a dummy network manager instead of using a real network. Maybe you just want to have a, a loopback or a failed network kind of connector. Um, and so you want to have a test scene with that, but then if you're using a singleton pattern and you're expecting a, um, you know, a full-fledged network manager, uh, you know, maybe that reference won't work right, and then you have modality switching and it gets confusing and chaotic. So, um, I've come up with a method that works very well for me that is, uh, doesn't end up with um, a lot of... Uh, misnamed, renamed managers everywhere. Uh, you're not constantly doing finds. It only uh, performs a find when it's absolutely needed. Um, and it only does it once. It caches the, the found manager, right? So if your network manager needs a game manager, it will look for a game manager and it will cache that result so that it's not constantly looking it up. Um, and then it's also clear and consistent. Um, does require a little bit more intermediate coding than um, a lot of the tutorials we see online, uh, but I feel that it's been a, a nice, clean way to uh, manage my managers. So um, here's the example, right? We have a game manager, input manager, network manager. And if we go in here, we can see, you know, the, the blank game manager has a you know, Boolean is paused, right? And so that might be of interest to a, a network manager, an input manager. And so we'll go into the code here. Uh, basically, um, what we're doing is uh, pretty much what you would expect, right? So here's your game manager, and then we have a start. You could have your update. You could have your normal things um, in here. The only difference is, is this inherits from a my game behavior, right? So, you know, if I was working on Pongo, it'd be like Pongo behavior or something like that. Um, so this is a parent class. And so all of these managers, so basically we're making the assumption that we only want one of each family of managers in the scene at one time. You only want one network manager. You only want one game manager in the scene at one time that, that you are assuming that you only have one. Um, and that all of these managers, um, so here's the input manager, right, start, update, looks exactly as it normally would. All of these managers um, inherit from this my game behavior. So what's in my game behavior? In this case, what I've done is I've just created uh, what's called, what I call a cached component, right? Um, and so I say I know that for my game, I'm going to have a game manager, an input manager, and a network manager. And this is what does all of the caching and getting so that um, you can, for example, 
uh, have your blanket put manager and this looks and acts like a normal uh, mono behavior, but then anywhere in here, you can just say game manager dot is paused, right? And that, what that does, right? Or, you know, you can have your if statement, right? If game manager is paused right, then you do something or not do something in your update statement. So what's going on is just that this reference to game manager is in my game behavior and so that you can use it anytime and that when you call it from my game behavior, um, the game manager, um, it uses a get so it looks like a property. Um, it's a just a, a getter method and it pulls up the cache of it. Now if it doesn't have a game manager um, already, then it goes out, it does the find. So each instance will do a find once, um, but it won't keep repeating the find, right? It says, we think there's only going to be one game manager. So it goes out, finds the game manager and returns it. Um, and that way it's computationally efficient. Um, but I find actually more than that, it's easy to use and maintain because this makes a lot of sense. And then anything that comes from my game behavior um, has these and that it will also have all the normal mono behavior stuff, right? So this is just a mono behavior plus um, all of these cached references to managers. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the other thing that's nice about this, right, is that um, when it does this lookup, right, this cache component lookup, it does a find based on um, a parent class, right? So in this case, I have a blanket put manager, but um, you know, we'll have a, a network manager, right? So we have this blank network manager and it says, hey, I'd be reading from this URL, All right? And I think that's the one that I have uh, in here now. Yep, so we have a blank network manager on there. So I can hit play and then the program starts and it'll say, I'm reading from URL site.com, right? Except for um, this read for site from site call comes from um, <clears throat> the ga game manager, right? So the game manager initializes and then it makes a call out to the network manager and the network manager goes and does something. But again, you might want an offline version of your game that doesn't make this call. And so um, you say, oh man, now I need to find all of my network managers and replace them. You don't have to do all of that with this approach. Um, <clears throat> what you do is I can just turn off this network manager, right? And I can create another one and we'll call it alternate network manager, right? And then I will attach this alternate network manager script. Now this is, this alternate network manager is a child of the blank network manager, but um, it, <coughs> excuse me, um, has all of the, the uh, methods and it overrides them, right? And so what's going to happen is when the game behavior says, oh man, I need a network manager, it's gonna go out, it's gonna find this alternate network manager um, in the scene and say, oh yeah, that's a blank net network manager, that'll do the job. And so you'll see here that uh, when we hit play, instead of going, you know, reading from site.com, um, all of a sudden it's going to say, hey, I'm a stand and used for testing, reading from disk instead of from a URL, right? So, you know, again, you may have a, a game where you're doing some uh, testing of you, your bots or AI or something like that. You want to read from disk instead of the network. And so you can just um, have a scene where you're just testing one thing and you can choose uh, which form of network manager you have and it'll automatically find um, the one instance. Now, if you have none of them selected, right, and you have a problem and you hit play, um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, hey, no blank network manager found when game manager searched for it. So it tells you what it was looking for and who was looking for it. Um, and then likewise, if you have more than one selected, um, it will say, now that came in as an error, um, it'll give you a warning and say multiple blank network managers found when game manager searched using the first one. And that's indeterminate, right? So in this case, it looks like um, actually the alternate uh, was the one that it selected. So you you know this warning is, is pretty serious. You wanna make sure that you only have one of these. Um, but again, 
it allows you a lot of flexibility that depending on um, what things are active uh, when your scene first loads, uh, it will go out and be able to cache the, the appropriate things. So the only place this doesn't really work is if you have game objects that are marked don't destroy on load, uh, because what will happen is the first scene, they'll try to find the game manager and other things, um, and then if those are kept alive and a new scene is loaded, right, it will retain the references from the old scene. So that's the only time uh, I wouldn't use this. Um, I should also, I think uh, there is a mechanism um, in cached component. Um, I will check to see uh, under my game behavior. Um, I believe there's actually a method that on uh, scene load um, that I can take an action and then basically what I would do is I would null these out and so that would force it to search uh, after a scene has been loaded. So I might actually be able to uh, resolve that one limitation. So I'm going to set up a, um, a GitHub page um, for this code so you can see the cache component and how that works and then the my game behavior. Um, and so this is kind of a nominal implementation, same with the blank network manager, the blank input manager, right? These are all just kind of nominal implementations um, so that in your game, you would come up with your own game behavior. Um, you can certainly reuse this cache component. Um, but then the idea is you build this out and, and you're creating a nice, convenient shorthand uh, that will automatically search uh, for the right component and provide proper errors or warnings if those components aren't around. So um, thought I'd just put that one out there. Um, I may also start adding other Unity editor extensions that I find really useful. Um, things like, you know, uh, many objects have the look at method um, except for quads, it needs to look away from something instead of look at, and that's missing in Unity. Um, things like that. I just, uh, you know, feel like there's a, a few just convenience helper things um, that we could be tossing in there and, um, you know, adding a little bit of refinement. Um, improving the interface for, say, uh, if you want random ranges, right? Um, a lot of times I end up just using a vector 2 or something for min max, but it'd be nice if you had a nice user interface that, you know, explicitly said minimum, maximum. It just makes it easier to, um, uh, you know, extend the editor and uh, makes it a little nicer to work with when there's that little bit of polish there. So i um, going to, over time, build up this library and make it available. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be on GitHub without anything else. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, as usual, feel free to comment below. Or if you're one of my patrons, uh, feel free to comment on Patreon. Thank you all very much and um, have a good time coding out there. Take care.